<laughs> Did you give him 50 quid to talk to him? Jerry, how you doing? <laughs> Have you drink taken? He's he's a drink drink taker. Taker. He doesn't drink. You he know does. That. He's, he's, he's I, half tubed there. He doesn't are know you? how to drink. He's what time I is it, Darren? It's, 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 what is it, 8 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning? What is it, Stephen? It's half past 2 in the morning, Mr. Anderson. Have you drink, have you've drink taken, haven't you? I might have had the other. <laughs> <laughs> I know the old voice of you. I've heard you before. Stephen, are you tipsy at the minute? He is. No. He it's is. half I 2 in the morning. He's I know not what he's like when he's a stayed up. He's a very professional reporter, as you know, Jerry. What a cultural odyssey he's going through. Let me go through that again. David Copperfield, The Price is Right, <laughs> Ventriloquist, Conan O'Brien. Well, representative and yeah. ambassador for Ulster. That's right. He, well hasn't done. Even, he hasn't even tried the California <laughs> Merlots. <laughs> Tell me, go to bed now. For God, go to bed for God's sake. Anderson, listen, I haven't told you the best, but ask me what I did last night. What did you do last night? I went to see the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Go, go away. Go to your bed before it's too late. Brilliant. I need to laugh, and when the sun is out, I've got something I can laugh about. It feels good in a special way. I'm in love, and it's a sunny day. Good day sunshine Good day sunshine Good day sunshine We take a walk The sun is shining down Burns my feet as they touch the ground Good day sunshine Sunshine, good day, sunshine. the last thing we'll see today, Sunshine. That's a band called Beetlegrass. It's from uh, an album called Beetlegrass 2. I'll spell that for you. Sorry, I'm just f- clashing it around the place. B-E-A-T-L-E uh, G-R-A-S 1-S. Beetlegrass 2. You can check it out if you like. Good day, Sunshine. Good morning. Gerald Michael Anderson here. The number to ring your phone to contact this programme is 08459 555 678. The email address is jerry.anderson at the bbc.co.uk uh, the text messaging service is 81 Double seven one. Got a fine uh, piece of music coming up today. Uh, a young lady called Marianne Green from Denmark. She's going to come in with her band and a whole a whole lot of them. <laughs> so that'll be after eleven o'clock. And uh, people are writing to me. A gentleman uh, paying uh, particular attention to the television last night. A man who calls himself John Joe, but it may not be his real name. He said, "I was watching Keith Duffy in Coronation Street last night. I missed that now. Keith has splashed out apparently on a new set of teeth." Every time he opens his mouth, his teeth looks like a neon-lit sign in Las Vegas. Don't be telling Nolan that. He'll be looking for them. I could see the other actors recoil as Keith blinded them with his massive dazzling choppers. Why is it... What is it with teeth these days? Well, everybody's getting them done. Even I have had a number of caps, although I don't talk about that too much. My granny lost all her teeth at the age of 13 and for over 70 years after depended on one pair of National Health false teeth. Granny could eat anything. Apples, carrots, bundor and rock, particularly rough, and raw turnips, particularly daunting. A granny looked on her teeth as a sort of a Swiss army knife. 
there were different compartments, different angles you could uh, approach the grub with depending on the uh, hardness of the, the article. She would take them out and scrape grease from around the sink. She'd pick up dog poo. No, no need for that. She'd remove old wallpaper. What about chipping? Shave her legs, crimp the pastry around the edge of applications. See, many, 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 many applications. Many's the time I saw her take out her teeth, hold them up to the light and say, these teeth are the business. She left her false teeth to me when she died. John Joe, she said, before she toddled off. Look after these teeth and these teeth will look after you. I'm getting on myself now. I only have two left in my own mouth. When, I, when them two give up the ghost, I will pop granny's false teeth into my mouth and get stuck into toffee brandy balls, tough mutton and the big granny Smith apples. Keith Duffy can keep his neon lit, amazing, brilliant gnashes. Granny's old teeth will do for me. I remember on this programme a gentleman rang. I think it was from Limerick or somewhere like that, somewhere south. Was it Cork or somewhere? Apparently there's a place there and you can buy people's false teeth. People who've died. Secondhand false teeth? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Here's the four of us, a voice on the radio. We watched a Roman candle burn The day the world refused to turn Even a chimpanzee can learn To act a little human We saw a fire crack a fall among the market shops and stalls And then we wonder if it all was just an illusion Well time roll back again When I hear your voice on the radio Well time roll back again When I see the smokestack fall Time roll back again When the sun collides into Jupiter Don't you know I'd follow you anywhere You get so tired of being told That it's your future that can be sold until a moment stops you cold and you hear your heart beating Now we're fighting for every breath that we take We're looking for all the friends we can make And we survive with every hand that we shake on the radio Will time roll back again When I see the smokestack fall Will time roll back again When the sun collides into Jupiter Don't you know I'll follow you anywhere I can't find a
That's the four of us, uh, voice on the radio. Uh, our email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk, but alas, it does not work today. So if you're going to send me an email today, you're wasting your time. But you can give us a ring at 08459 555 678, and you can still send us a text message if you have anything urgent to say, 0845, although I doubt it, 08459 555 678. Some people have texted me already. I have a message for Jerry. How do you get a job in the BBC? I'm prepared to do anything, but sleep with an MLA. I don't rule anything out. You could always give Edmund Poots 50 quid. You know, I don't know what it would do, but everybody else is doing it. How do you get a job in the BBC? Well, I don't know. Maybe you could do what I did. I've collapsed because of lack of food outside the BBC one time. They brought me in and fed me. And then when they brought me around, they realised they could talk, so they put me in front of a microphone and cleaned me up. Welcome back, Rainbow Warrior. Thanks, just call me RW. Less music and more talking, please. It makes it more exciting. Remember, you haven't been to court in years. <laughs> <laughs> a man harking back on my past glories. That's from Jason, who describes himself as being from Little Portugal. I don't know where that is. It's either in Portugal or a sub-region of Belfast that I know nothing about. Jerry, could you help us? Yes, that's just what I'm here for. We have lost our wee cat. He's away. Just over two weeks now, Redwood Grove in Dunmurray. He's black. If anyone has found him, let us know. That's from Simon. A small black cat in Dunmurray. Uh, Nolan sounds weird today. He sounds like a woman. No, he sounds like a man who's taken drink. Obviously, the BBC sound technicians work wonders with him when he does his show. No, usually when he does when he does his show, he's absolutely you know sober. Uh, and also another message here, which I will not read. <laughs> no, no, I'm not reading that. One. Then maybe 
That's Grania Duffy, and that's a song called uh, New We're Gonna Be Just Fine. I'd like to say hello to, who's this? Uh, Chris Kelly, who's uh, listening on his laptop in Bloomsbury. He's enjoying the crack. Uh, Jerry, could you please play Christy Moore's cover of My Little Honda 50 for my two-year-old son, Oron. Is that? Oh, Oron. O-D-H-R-A-N. I don't know how to pronounce these names, but it's a nice name if you could pronounce it. Who loves dancing around the house to it. Well, you see, I recommend you listen to Hugo. Hugo plays a version of it by some other guy, and it's a different version entirely. I was accused of following uh, in Hugo's footsteps, which is an awful thing to be accused of, and said, you're playing Hugo's stuff. But see, Christy Moore's version of My Little Hunter 50 is not the same as the other version that Hugo plays. There is a difference. I don't know how to explain it to you, but if you don't understand the difference, there's no point in even talking about it. And Jerry, could you please play Our Own Way from the Rapparee's Wrapped Up album. I haven't played a track from that for, for a long time. That reminds me, I must get that out. And I don't have uh, that uh, Christy Moore verse. Christy Moore will be here live, actually, the week after next, Friday, December 9th, so don't miss that. He's, uh, he's a great live performer. And Jerry, would you please play a Derek Ryan song for Eimer and Oma. Eimer and Oma. Or Eimer and Arma. So that's nearly it. Thanks a million. And please, out, please read this out. A Jack Russell has been found in the Rishakin area. For more info, contact your show. Right. Any chance of playing your old pal, Brush Shields? I don't know. I don't know. Brush has kind of become like a kind of a clown, hasn't he? He's gone down that entertainment road, which is always a, always a rough road. The place the false teeth go is called Massachusetts. Thank you very much, Archie Davidson. I appreciate that. Uh, the Laurel and Hardy Appreciation Society have another fine mess. Tent of Northern Ireland will be meeting again tomorrow night on Saturday the 26th of November. Since this, uh, gentleman says, since this is our Christmas meeting, our programme has a distinctly seasonal flavour. Uh, Laurel and Hardy style, of course. Uh, so there we go. Last, uh, admission is only £4 for adults and £3 for children. Which is, uh, seems reasonable enough to me. This is Mark Cimino, a man who's disappeared completely. That's because he was good. He disappeared without trace. And there he persists. I come from an average town where the trees grow strong and the dirt lays brown. Where your eyes light up when the sun goes down. If you cruise all night and you don't break down, you can find yourself on some solid ground. When the blues kick in and the deal goes down, I found I am a very lucky man. I danced with a fire below, traded down wind trouble for a bright rainbow. Had miles of mercy dropped upon my soul with tears dripping on my own payload. But like a rolling river, I was bound to flow through the rank and file of my own episode. You see, I am a very lucky man. Just a little piece of somebody's master plan And it is a privilege just to know where I stand I am a very lucky man Now I've walked on the far left side of the highway ditch and a great divide It's a short career But it's justified It's got lots of perks And it's double wide You can trust your steps When you start to slide You can fall and never have to run and hide You see, I am a very lucky man I am a very lucky man I'm just a little piece of somebody's master plan And it is a privilege not to know where I stand I am a very lucky man
set in the highest court With a three ring circus and a plastic fork Sticking witchcraft people as a last resort Then a little detrimental to my own report When the jury handed me a verdict slot Said we find you guilty for the things you're not Ripped each medal off my poor chest and only got silence as my protest Where the judge said to kill me at his request I said I'm ready to die But I must confess that I am a very lucky man I am a very lucky man I am just a little piece of somebody's master plan and it is a privilege to be blessed or be damned I am a very lucky man I am a very lucky man I am a very lucky man Mark Cimino, spelled to G-E-R-M-I-N-O. That's an album called Rank and File, and that's called uh, A Very Lucky Man. Uh, some messages here. Uh, my uncle has a mobility scooter for sale. It's less than 50 miles done. Includes brand new battery. Top speed is four miles per hour. He's an arma, and his number is the following. His name is George Thompson. He can be contacted afternoon or contact this number before. Uh, what chance is there of Daniel being in the studio before Christmas? I would say the chance of Daniel being in the studio before Christmas are next to nil. Now, I don't know why Daniel seems to have fallen out with me. I think he realises that I'm vaguely uh, unsavoury. Hello, Jerry. I found out while you were away how to get past the firewall to read something out. Referring, of course, to Mr. Coyle, who unfortunately is not here to speak for himself, so I can say whatever I like about him and mean it. Uh, you just tell him that you're from somewhere exotic and his ego kicks in. Really? didn't realise that. In other words, if you ring him up and say, listen, I'd like to talk to Jerry. Could you uh, wish happy birthday to my friend John? Uh, I'm, who are you? My name is Mark. Where are you from? I'm from Tandragee. He won't do it. But if you say, Mark, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, Venezuela. He'll read it. That's Mark from Naples, by the way. And uh, please say, <laughs> please say congratulations to Steve. I'm starting to laugh like Hugo. Do you notice that? That's what happens after a while if you're down here. Uh, Mark, please say congratulations to Stevie Garrett from Clifton. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm please, <laughs> please say congratulations to Stevie Garrett from Cliftonville, who raised over £1,000 for children in need. Well done. Excellent. And say it comes from uh, the Green Island Reds. Yeah, good. And oh, uh, by the way, the emails are working again. Sorry about that. Uh, so if you want to send me an email, go ahead. Jerry.Anderson at bbc.co.uk. Uh, Robert Dorian sends me one already, and he describes himself as a silver surfer. You know what a silver surfer is. A person who's retired and has gone to a night class and learned how to work the computer and tells everybody and is on YouTube 25 hours a day. As we silver surfers know, sometimes we have trouble with our computers if we don't go to the right night classes. I had a problem yesterday, so I called Eric, the 11-year-old next door. As a matter of fact, if you want anything done with your computer, 11 is a bit old. Five-year-olds seem to know more now. His bedroom looks like mission control. I asked him to come over. Eric clicked a couple of buttons and solved the problem. As he was walking away, I called after him. So, that's the way I talk. So, what was wrong? He said, it was an ID 10T error. I didn't want to look stupid, but nevertheless, a what? An ID 10T error. What's that? In case I needed to fix it again. Could I do it? No, you won't be able to do it. Haven't you heard of an ID 10I? Sorry, an ID 10T error before? I replied, no, write it down. I think you'll figure it out. So I wrote it down. ID 10T, idiot. I used to like Eric, the little swine. Little swines are like that. Little smart arses. ID 10T, idiot, ID 10T. Sorry, you know, it's not hard. This chin was composed by Spencer the Rover. Has Valiant Man had ever left home? Well, he had been much reduced and it called. 
caused great confusion, and that was the reason he started to roll. In Yorkshire, near Rotherham, he had been on the ramble, and weary of travelling, he had sat down to rest by the foot of the young mountain, by a clear crystal fountain, with bread and cold water himself, dead refreshed. With the night fast approaching to the worst he resorted With the wood to bind an ivy as his bed for to make But he dreamt about sighing in the mountain and crying Go home to your family and grab them for sake Twas the fifth day of November That was, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for that slight delay there. That's uh, Cara Dillon. What happens is sometimes you'll be sitting here looking around you and your headphones are working away and you're listening to music and sometimes the music stops and you say, that was really good. And you went, oh, God, I think I have to talk now. And then you kind of do your little buttons. By the time you do that, there's a big hole in the middle of it. Anyway, not to worry. And uh, that's from an album called uh, Hill of Thieves by Cara Dillon. And that's a track called uh, Spencer the Rover. Now, uh, emails... Uh, oh, I can't read that. Oh, no, no, no. Emails are OK now, by the way. Uh, I alarmed you at the beginning. It's uh, jerry.anderson at uh, bbc.co.uk. And, of course, you can send me an email address at that address, uh, an email message at that address. Uh, you can give us a ring at 08459 555 678. And there's no reason at all why you shouldn't do that. And the gentleman has asked me about the scooter. Uh, I'll tell you about it again. It's uh, there's 50, less than 50 miles done. Includes a brand new battery. Uh, top speed is four miles per hour. So you don't want to be going too fast. On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. BBC News at 11 o'clock with Sabrina Sweeney. Translink has announced there will be no bus or train services here next Wednesday due to the public sector strike. In a statement, the company apologised for any inconvenience to customers, adding that the strike is beyond its control. The firm also said it has made the announcement today to give the travelling public as much time as possible to make alternative arrangements.
Heathrow Airport has asked airlines arriving from abroad during next Wednesday's strike by public sector workers to try to halve the number of passengers they bring into the country. Officials say delays of up to 12 hours in getting through passport control would mean passengers would have to wait on the planes causing gridlock and cancellations. BA and Virgin Atlantic say passengers can rebook free of charge. A County Tyrone woman whose home was flooded last month says she hopes a new flood prevention scheme will help save her house during heavy rainfall in the future. The Agriculture Minister Michelle O'Neill has been in Berra this morning to announce that a £1.75 million flood prevention scheme in the village has been brought forward. Elaine Moses says if the scheme is successful it will save her home from future damage. The last time my home was flooded it was about a foot and a half to two foot of water inside the house. So basically everything downstairs was ruined. It's devastating and you really don't have the heart in your home again, you know. To, because if there's nothing in place to prevent it happening again, you wonder to yourself, why am I bothered? Around half a dozen homes in Bush Manor and Antrim have been evacuated because of a security alert. Army technical officers were called to the Steeple Road after a suspicious object was found on a building site. The Steeple Road has been closed. Crowds calling for an end to military rule in Egypt have spent another night in Cairo's Tahrir Square. The protesters are calling on large numbers of people to join their demonstration after Friday prayers. The campaigners fear the ruling military council wants to hang on to power. Sport now with Denise Watson. Northern Ireland's 2014 World Cup qualifying fixture list has been released. The first game is away to Russia on the 7th of September next year, so they've avoided a November trip there. The planned redevelopment of Windsor Park means they play their final three games away from home against Luxembourg, Azerbaijan and Israel. The details will be on our Sport Online website shortly. Ireland jointly lead the World Cup of Golf in China thanks to a four under par score today in the second round foursomes by Rory McIlroy and Graham McDowell. The Australians are also on 13 under for the tournament. Pat Fenlon is the new manager of Hibernian and Ulster are away to Glasgow in the Pro 12 tonight. The match is live on BBC Two and online from half seven. And the weather forecast now with Angie Phillips. Still a few sharp showers at first, but those showers will become lighter and more scattered as we head into the afternoon and will eventually become mainly confined to the north coast. So increasing amounts of dry weather with some brighter spells likely to develop in places too, especially across the south and east. Winds also moderate a little, but feeling quite cool with highs of 8 or 9 Celsius. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. As you've just heard, the Steeple Road in Antrim is closed because of a security alert. That's between Stiles Road and the Bush Road in the Bush Manor area of the town. On to Roadworks and in Dunmurray, the River Road is closed between Ballyskay Road and Conway Lane until 4 o'clock today. A diversion is in place via Bells Lane, Queensway and Ballybog Road. And in Carrickfergus, there will be a lane closure on the A2 Belfast Road until 4.30 today between Ranboy Park and the Old Shore Road. Michael Bedwell reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Dan. How are you? I'm all right. You I survived. I'm sober, not like Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> You survived anyway. <laughs> yes, good to be back. Didn't maybe go quite as far as you'd thought, but... Now, see, whenever I go to America, I don't go and see David Copperfield, I don't go and see the Muppets, and I don't go and see things like that. You see, I, do, I go to libraries. I know, it's very touching. Yeah. Uh, and I can't say anything to you about the six-mile thing, because I couldn't do six eight. miles either. Eight. 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 Oh, it's terribly sorry. Eight. Gosh. Smack my wrist. Anyway, I hear you may, you may be on Shanks' as mayor again next Wednesday. By well, the looks of things, we've indeed. been trying to find out how people are going to get to work next Wednesday, if yeah. indeed they are working rather than striking. Uh, no buses, no trains. Um, so it'll be Shanks's pony for many or on your bike or yeah. whatever. So we're trying to find out um, how people are intending to get to work next week. Uh, we're wondering too about this... Uh, Junket, I think is probably the word, that the Dell committee is talking about all of them going to San Diego to try to, well, it's a bit hard to find out exactly what it is to try to do, but um, we're going to delve into that. What is it they say? Drill down into it, isn't that the current jargon? So there'll be a bit of drilling there. Um, Immigration, I don't know about you, we're hearing about so many young people who are leaving now. Uh, I wonder why. (laughs) Well, exactly, you know, there are no jobs, Donegal's empty. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, there are GAA clubs where, you know, up to 30 30 youngsters have all gone off to Australia and New Zealand. And we're kind of wondering, 
Is that, um, this is a very talkback question, is it a more Catholic thing to do? Are there, you know, are there more well, Catholics who leave than Protestants? Well, well, I'll tell you what I noticed uh, in Donegal. I live uh, just beside Donegal and I, so I've been in Donegal all the time. Uh, people are just deserting like in droves. Because, yeah. And I realised it was serious when, once I started to see the pubs closing. I mean, would you ever think you'd have seen that in Donegal? Mm -hmm. Pubs, big empty pubs and the, uh, the shutters up. It's, uh, it's every man for himself. That's yeah, really serious, yeah. isn't it? Um, uh, on a lighter note, Holly Sweeney, you know, Rory's yes. ex, Rory McIlroy's ex, she's going to be in this um, programme on uh, TV3. Um, it has a golf and tennis theme. I wonder why. She seems uh, a little green. <laughs> I know. So we're wondering about that. Yes, is this the best thing she could do for her career? And last but not least, since we're a couple of... Uh, I, you know the way they call you veteran broadcaster? I hate that. But um, we have a veteran broadcaster on, John Craven. He's been around for longer than either of us, I think. Um, you know, news Round's getting a BAFTA, which is which is really good, actually. Uh -huh. So he's talking about that. But he also mentions uh, uh, Country File is from mm -hmm. here on Sunday. Right. Uh, he's been in County Antrim and he's been to the Dark Hedges. Have you oh, ever been there? I've never been there, no. Have you? You should Google it. Uh, I'd never heard of it. Lived here all my life. Well, what did never you discover when you Googled it? It is absolutely astonishing. It right. looks like it's been generated by computer for Harry Potter. <laughs> I swear to goodness, it's amazing. Most uh, astonishing uh, kind of row of beaches. It looks like the Whomping Willow. Oh my God. Um, so I'm, we're wondering, have you got a weird, astonishing, amazing place like that anywhere near you? There's a place actually between uh, between uh, Greencastle and Maville and it's like a it's like a fairy glen. You, you drive along there and you realise that you're in what you always imagine would be a fairy glen. You know, the kind of odd little hills and crooked trees and, and babbling brooks. Every time I go in there I go, my God, look at this. You expect to see fairies and then you don't. And met by moonlight, <laughs> proud Titania. That's all you would need there. The thing about Newsround it deserves that BAFTA. Did you say it was? Because yeah. they've pioneered the way. Because all the news, pro all the news programs now are like Newsround. Uh, they are. <laughs> You're completely right. And finally, <laughs> that's it for me. See you later, man. Cheers, Jerry. Good to have you back. Bye. Thanks. to me next to me no worries no sound next to me come on down I am naked and cold place your boots with my bed just like the poets of old Whisper the dance Inside your head comes and it flies Darkness comes and it stays With just the light in your eyes That's all that matters anyway There. Stay a while 
a candle brushed by the wind forever burning again oh baby lie down next to me next to me no worries no sound next to me Come on down Oh, oh baby, lie down Next to me Next to me No worries, no sound Next to me So come on I wasn't much older than four, maybe five at the most. The cold to school mornings were colder, and no such thing as a bus. Our mother'd be searching for school bags and combing our hair the wrong way. As she buttered our toast, buttoned our coats, here's what my mother would say. We all need a hug in the morning, one at the end of the day. As many as possible squeezed in between to keep life's troubles at bay. No matter wherever you ramble, your problems be great or be small. It is my belief for instant relief, a hug is the best cure of all. I met an old exile in Boston who longed to go back home one day but he thought no one there would be caring for he'd been so long away to stop a teardrop in his coffee he gave his old whiskers a tug and I knew that he'd give all he needed to live for a big welcome home again hug for we all need a hug in the morning And no one at the end of the day And as many as possible squeezed in between To keep life's troubles at bay No matter wherever you ramble Your problems be great or be small It is my belief for instant relief A hug is the best cure of all There's a doctor who lives out in China A master of medical arts They tell me that there is no finer In curing all defective parts He says that the very best treatment The only truly safe drug The only elixir that surely will fix ya Is a big warm old-fashioned hug for we all need a hug in the morning And one at the end of the day As many as possible squeezed in between To keep life's troubles at bay No matter wherever you ramble Your problems be great or be small It is my belief for instant relief A hug is the best cure of all And when Adam was cast from the garden And feeling that life was unfair His temper was starting to harden When Eve said, I've nothing to wear But God in his mercy looked kindly He gave his white shoulders a shrug I'll give humankind a small piece of my mind And so he created the hug and we all need a hug in the morning And one at the end of the day And as many as possible squeezed in between To 
keep life's troubles at bay. No matter wherever you ramble, your problems be great or be small. It is my belief for instant relief, a hug is the best cure of all. A letter can bring consolation, a phone call can brighten the night. In the midst of great aggravation, they can put at least some things to right. But when your heart feels like it's breaking, your life slipping down past the plug, and you feel like a ghost, the thing you want most is someone to give you a hug. We all need a hug in the morning And one at the end of the day As many as possible squeezed in between To keep life's troubles at bay No matter wherever you rumble Your problems be great or be small It is my belief for instant relief A hug is the best cure of all A hug for instant relief. Uh, others employ different methods, but we don't judge here. That's Ben Sands. That's from an album called Better Already. It's called Hug, and before that was a track from Kendall Carson, who came here uh, a couple of years ago. Lovely girl and a fine fiddle player and singer. She came here with Chip Taylor. You may remember him. That's from her album, which is called All Right Dynamite. And a lady is given away, believe it or not, a beautiful white and grey 22-year-old cockerel. So if you want to, that'll be great somewhere in Rath, like Rath Cool or somewhere. Uh, get get the neighbours up, especially the people who don't have to sign. 22-year-old cockerel, a free to a good home. Anyone who wants a free cockerel? Uh, no jokes, please. Uh, Rosemary is giving that away, and I've got her number here. Give us a ring. Uh, another message. My dog was lost on the 1st of November. A, a black and white coley dog called Chip. Lost between Randallstown and Pork Lanone. He is chipped. Anybody know anything? Uh, I phoned in before, but it wasn't read out. It must have been Sean then. Uh, gobble, gobble, a turkey neck. Thank you. Do you fancy coming to my house and switching on the Christmas tree lights? No, thank you. Th- no, thank you, Jason. I can pay you with a big bag of monkey nuts left over from Halloween. No, thanks. Please play an Elvis song for all the down- all the people at the Down Patrick Cricket Club putting the Christmas tree up. Well, you're late, boys. I'm out delivering this morning, says a man who works on the mail. Uh, he said, I've got a letter here for Anna Long in Anna Long. <laughs> Why not? I'm laughing like you go again. <laughs> oh, no. uh, a hell of thieves is a big... Now, stop that. We were with Charlie Lansborough at the weekend, says Caroline in Port Rush, and met Jerry. Can Jerry mention uh, hello to Eamon Leahy? Yeah, Eamon Leahy used to, be, used to be with Charlie, didn't he? And my mum is 91 on Sunday. Her name is Martha McWilliams in Swatra. Please say happy birthday to her and ho- also hello to my sister Bernie. And she's a big fan of the programme. And also, please play something by your old mate Sean Donnelly. Uh, and, uh, oh, Sean will be here next week, actually, next Friday. Happy trucker. Uh, a person wants to know, does the scooter have cruise control? I, I'm not in possession of that information. I'm not practically minded. And please play again that classic a Bohemian Rhapsody by William Shatner that you played the other day. No, there's no need for that. There's no need for that whatsoever. It was just a, an aberration. <laughs> I wish I was and Carrick Fergus only for the nights and Ballygrand. I would swim over the deepest ocean just to see. Yeah, 
beginning It is reported They've got marble stones there Some kid trying to make a mark Got chased down with a gun Got sent to the stars Just for fun He got sent to the stars That was the ballad of Vincent Rose Kinda short, I suppose That's uh, John Graham Leslie. I'm sorry, the uh, four of us were on before that, but they stopped for reasons beyond my control. Uh, Marion Green has joined us. Hello, Marion. How are Hello, you? Hello, Joey. How are Marian, you? you? you've been in here before. It was a while ago now. How long ago was it? I think it's about a year ago. Now, um, you're an extraordinary person because uh, I, I wanted you to talk just a little bit because people will just assume that you're from here, but, but you're not. You're Danish. Yes, I'm Danish, but I do have a bit of a mixed background as well, culturally, so I'm not entirely Danish. Because my, my mother's Italian, as you know, and my father's half Danish and half English. So I grew up with different languages and different cultures, but in, all in Denmark. So I'm mostly Danish. Yeah, but I mean, you were born in Denmark. Born in Denmark. And raised in Denmark. And raised in Denmark, yes. And you've got a Northern Ireland accent. <laughs> <laughs> How did you manage that? Well, it's a no, trick asked this, I have. <laughs> no, I, I asked you this before, but it's great. Uh, as far as I remember, you, you, how did you, was it through music? Basically? It was through music. I discovered Irish music and I fell in love with it and... I also really like the songs and that's how I got into the Irish language thing and I suppose the accent as well, everything goes together and I just like the, the music and the musicality and, and the language and the and the music. 
Uh-huh. And who were the first people you listened to? Who, who, was, who first introduced you to, to Irish music and who did you listen to? Um, well, it's, it's a little bit of a mystery because I know my father played a lot of different kinds of music when I was growing up on the record player. Uh, and it would have been there would have been folk music in that as well. But I know for certain that I one day when I was about thirteen, he put a Dubliners album on, and I thought, "That's very strange. What's that? <laughs> what's that music?" And I asked yeah. him straight out and said, "What what kind of music is that?" And he said, "Well, that's Irish music." Yeah. Oh, well, do you have do you have any more of that? Any you more know, because there was the tunes and there was the songs and. Yeah. So after that, I just started on my own wee exploration journey because there was no internet at the time, so you had to kind of. Uh, did you kind of go around shops and look for Irish music? Uh, did you try and buy albums? That I did, thing? but the place where I lived, there wouldn't be any. Where, where, where there was some at the library would have a little bit. There's some Danish bands that play Irish music in Denmark, and the library would have some of that, uh, like a band called Ashplant, who's been playing music for about thirty years, I think. Yes. In, yes. And uh, yeah, and then there's a few other, I don't remember what I found, but then I, I went to Ireland a few years after that and uh, picked out, sort of blindfolded some albums and I think it was Clatter Record Shops or something and I, I picked Dublin, out Christy yeah. Moore and another Chieftain's album or something. And that was sort of, that was how difficult it was until I met some people who actually played Irish music in Copenhagen. They could sort of tell me, or oh, maybe you should try listening yeah. to this and listening to that, and yeah. and then the internet came and it all became more easy as well. Christy Moore's coming in here next, 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 not next Friday, but the Friday after that. Oh right, okay. Oh, he's great. Did you have you ever met him? No, I haven't met him, but I know that the uh, Tim Martin who mixed the album Dear Irish Boy, he just finished Christy Moore's album, so oh, I was folk so tales. I feel happy about that. Well, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary story. I'll I'll talk to you about it again if you don't mind. Uh, would you introduce the members of the band for me? Uh, well, um, we've got Martin O'Hare who plays Boron, but he also um, ma- helps manage the band and he helps me get get the gigs. Uh, Martin, of course, is Danish too. Around. Oh, uh, Danish uh, Belfast, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you've lived in Denmark for many, many years, but you're yeah, from Belfast. One. Have you really? Yeah, oh, years now. You haven't got a microphone there, but, you know, don't worry about it. And he organises the Copenhagen Irish Festival. Really? For many years, so you bet you never thought you'd be coming back here with no, the Danish band. No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny, just a boomerang experience. Sorry. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Would you welcome back? Thanks for so, having me. And role. he's got he has to take the credit also for putting this tour together that we have. Yes, he's, we've got about five gigs now in one week, which is okay. We're really really happy about that. Um, okay, so, well, tell me. You yeah. may as well tell me now where they are, and then we'll recap at the end. Do you have the information there? Wh- where okay. We are? Well, uh, we already did two in Dublin, the, the Cobblestones, and the and yeah. then the Coleman Centre in Sligo. Yeah. And then tonight we're doing. Um, the Belfast Fla, Fla Ferste in yeah. the Culture Land. Culture Land. Uh, yeah. Together with that first light. But please come at 8 o'clock because if you come later, you'll miss me. <laughs> oh, you're on so first, I'm, aren't I'm, you? Yes, I'm, I'm supporting. So, And then tomorrow we've got the Do Nolu in Oma. Yes. yes. And then Sunday we are in Castlewell in the Lodge. That's okay. So well, we'll, come we'll remind the people before mm. you go where you are. And this gentleman here. On uh, guitar. This extraordinary gentleman from Norway is called Magnus Vik. Good morning, Magnus. He plays guitar and he hasn't got his dobro with him today, but we have a bit of dobro as well okay. uh, in some of the songs. And this gentleman? This is Sonic Ludum from Denmark. He plays uh, Irish music and Danish music and and French Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Future Cajun. Cajun. Yeah. Bit of Cajun. No Cajun. No Cajun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Boom. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway, very funny. Barney, would you like to do something for us? Uh, like yeah. Like song? Yeah. Uh, anything uh, you we'll choose? Do, yeah, we'll do a song that's not on the album, a new song okay. that we put together called Shoe in the Weaver. Okay. Yep. All right then. What, what, what's the origin of that? Did you write that or did you, is it No, cover? that's an old song um, that uh, I've kind of put together from a field recording that I found with it, uh, with the tune and the song, and then uh, the lyrics from a book called uh, Ga Kiet the uh, Cult of Olu. Which is a collection of Irish songs in the Irish language. With so I found you know a version in that and I put it together, and then I changed the rhythm a wee bit. So instead of four four time, we'll do it in jig time. I can't believe is your accent. <laughs> I can't believe your accent. No, it's amazing. Do you speak Irish as well? Uh, a little bit. I <laughs> we were <laughs> we were on the other station yesterday in RTE <laughs> doing a little uh, Irish language uh, interview. So really? get a uh, bye, I think. But I hope you... people understood what I said. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. 
Can you imagine people? I mean, you're Danish and, and you're on RTE. You're speaking in Irish. Well, oh, how wonderful! And you've got this Northern Ireland accent. Like people, I know people out there aren't going to believe this. You know, they aren't no. going to believe that you're Danish. They say, "Act oh, for God's sake!" She just went over there and she's been there for a couple of years. They not that they're going to call you Larry, but they'll find it hard to believe because you've such a lovely accent, and it's as if you'd never left. It's as yes. if you were born here and never left. But what do you think of her accent? Oh, I think she's been well proud of her. <laughs> Absolutely, you should teach her. Teach her more. T- teach her to say, "Keep her lit until I get out." <laughs> okay, Marion. I have go. to know what that means first. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it later. Okay. okay. Off you go, Marion, if you don't mind. Just lovely. That is just lovely. And I see you've got the finger in the air. Yeah, I, I don't have a very loud acoustic voice, so uh, just to balance up, I have to hear myself a wee bit better. It no, just makes look. it a bit easier. I don't put a finger in my ear, actually. Kind of. Oh, if you pull oh. the ear, if you make a little... You cup your, you cup cup your, your ear, ear with your, yeah, your hand like that. a little space All right, then. That's yeah. a good idea. It's yeah. a bit the same as having headphones on. But. Oh, well, what a fine bit of harmonica playing from Sonic there. Uh, you. you don't normally... I mean, I, I don't normally hear uh, Irish music played in the harmonica. It must be very difficult. Is it difficult? Mm. Must be. When yeah. you're used to it, it's not that difficult. <laughs> as, long as, as long as you know how to do it, it's okay. Well, there are a few uh, traditional players uh, around Ireland. Uh, uh, and do you, do you, do, would you spend any time in Ireland at all? Or not you? much. but uh, I've been here a few times, but uh, it's mostly from records. And I, I picked up the music. And do you, ever, do you ever play in any sessions here? Yeah, a few, yeah. Well, I bet you they think you're good, do they? Like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. I remember a friend of mine, a guitar player. Uh, he was uh, one of the. He's a rock and roll guitar player. Plays a super tramp, and I can't remember his name now. But he came here and uh, he went into a little session, and he couldn't believe it how good the musicians were. And this is one of the top uh, guitar players, Carl Verheyen. Mm. He's one of the top uh, guitar players in the world. And he went down, and there was a little session on, and he just couldn't believe it how great they were. And he, he tried to he tried to go, join the session, and he did. He went in there. And he did his best, but he just, he just he could just about nearly <laughs> keep up, you know. And this is one of the best guys in the world. And all the guys said, "Ah, oh, you'll be okay in a minute. Just keep listening," you know. Anyway, uh, you, and you, you, your last album was "Dear Irish Boy." Yes. Right. I loved that album. I loved it, and Thank I'm you. surprised you haven't done one since. Yes, I would love to do another one, but uh, why not? Well, <laughs> I will we'll see. I need a few sponsors, maybe. Oh, this I is the way the, it works. I did the I did the first album myself. Um, I made a, a little record company for it, and I I had it produced like within that, and uh, uh-huh. it'd be probably be very difficult to do that again. Um, 
but I've been very busy doing. I've done most of the work afterwards as well, like with the P- PR for the album and yeah, yeah. Th- that whole side together with uh-huh. her Productions and, and Martin over there. Yeah. Um. So there's a lot of work involved, and um, I think the next project I'd have to get somebody else involved in maybe being interested in, in making another album. So but Martin, it's a pity you haven't got a microphone. Is there any way, Martin? Could you speak into that microphone there, Martin? And uh, a wee bit about yourself. Just curious because you went to Denmark. When did you go? Uh, arrived in Denmark, Copenhagen, 1981. Uh-huh. So, uh, winter of 81. So. Did you go there just because you're fed up here or what was the crack? Uh, well, could could you direct your end of that microphone? Sorry, Martin. No uh, but, um, well, I, I left Ireland around 1980 and went out to France and toured around France. So I was working, looking for work. It's more or less an economical thing. Uh-huh. It's like uh, at, the, at that time in 1980. Yeah. Was, Martin, sorry. I'm sorry to stop you, Martin, but the, the mic isn't all that great. We, we, we'll, we'll fix it later. Can I we chat to you later sure, if you don't mind? Yeah. Because there's not much point in you talking if so the people can't hear you. And Marion, I see you've got a little flute there. It's a tin whistle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just because I have a lot of um, uh, s- slow songs as well. And okay. um, we just think it's nice to balance up when we do the live gigs. To, there's not any instrumentals in the album, for example. So, But yeah. when we do the live gigs, it's nice to have a few uh-huh. instrumental pieces as well. So well, are, are, you, are, you thinking of doing, are you thinking of doing one now? Uh, that would be great. Oh, lovely. And, uh, Go ahead. Sonic plays the accordion for that. And so Sonic, we all play you're, you're together. Sonic's some boy, isn't he? I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> okay, we're just getting the old flute warmed up. Oh, sorry, tin whistle. So we'll, we'll play a few jigs. Okay. Very nice, very nice, lovely, lovely piece of uh, what's the, uh, and a nice guitar player from from uh, nice guitar from Magnus. Mm. 
Excellent. But Martin, can I just... You've got a microphone now, Martin. You, you, went, to, uh, you went to Denmark when? In uh, 1981. Yeah, was it was because you were fed up here, troubles, that kind of old stuff, the usual uh, old thing. Well, it was more or less, I think I was on my nearly like third education, still got any work. There was no work, so I, like, I, I trained like, electronics and television. And that and oh, that right. right. Ended up working in fishing boats, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah. So, and uh, it was very bad times of fishing as well. So, and uh, uh-huh. I got an invitation to go to France and uh, go down there do a bit of work. You know, working like you know picking grapes and cherries and yeah. apricots and all kind. This as well. You know, if you prefer <laughs> nice. apricots or cherries. Uh, well, the apricots there. Yeah, <laughs> it's warmer anyway. But then, um, so I took off down to the south of France and thought, you know. Even though I wasn't working, I might as well be unemployed in South of France, it's unemployed in Northern Ireland. So. You can sleep on the beach, you can't sleep on the beach here. And, and did, yeah, so and and there's no dew down there, so you don't get wet or anything. So. That's right. But uh, the, way, the way the crops work is that they, they ripen later, f- from further north you go, so you start very s- far south and then you work your way north. So you like I ended up in uh, Germany, you know. You were following the sun up? Basically, yeah, so as they, if they got ripe or later in the year. And where did you meet up with Marion? Well, it's a good few years ago. So, um, I'm involved in organising a folk music club in Copenhagen, and uh, Marianne turned up at one of the the, co- the concerts for the folk club in Copenhagen, uh-huh. and uh, and then approached me about looking for boron lessons. You know, so. fantastic. You play the boron as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're also also a, a, a step dancer. Yeah, yeah. And actually, it well, says it says here that you you you're actually you, you're at a professional level. Well, we do um, professional performances with a small group of dancers uh, called Green Steps and then with uh, a band called Trad Lads. We've worked quite a lot with that concept of traditional music yeah. and dance together. Yeah. Um, and we've travelled, we've done shows in uh, in Denmark, but we've travelled as far as Argentina with it as well. So we've been yeah. in different countries, in Europe, as Italy and Spain and so it's been, that's been very good. Um, it was something that also encouraged me to to move forward with Irish music because I thought, well, it's possible to actually do this. Um, so, And then I have a friend called Julie and uh, I started a wee dance school in Copenhagen with, with Julie. So we took, uh, there's an exam you can take with an Irish Dance Commission in Ireland. Uh, so we, we yeah. took this exam with the help of a, an Irish dance teacher from Galway. Um, Amazing. So I, I, was, I was just going to ask you, I mean, how, how is it difficult for you to kind of market yourself? You know, because there wouldn't be too many people like you in 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 Denmark. You know. Yeah. Well, the thing is that we don't get a lot of help. Let's see if you you're in a country where the, there's a lot of exposure of that kind of music or that kind of dance. People see it, and they they get attracted to it and 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 look for it. And but if there aren't very many doing it, no. Like you're, it's only yourself who can show it. So, f- with the dancing, for example, um. It's it's difficult to for even people to know that it exists. Well, Riverdance didn't do any harm. No, that was very good, but it was only for a, a period. It was very fashionable in Denmark with Riverdance, yeah. and there's a lot of schools, dance schools that teach ballroom dancing and all kinds of fashion fashion dances. Yeah, they would take Riverdance on, and call it Riverdance. Yeah, they would yeah. call you know you can you can do Riverdance, and then they would teach things that look like something they had they copied means, it from the show but it wasn't anything to do with Irish dancing so it means nothing it's just kind of a gimmick really to get, uh, get the bums on seats get them in yeah. there yeah and people after a few years then find out that hold on a second I'm still doing what I was doing two years ago I'm not learning anything more advanced I'm not getting any better because the schools uh-huh. couldn't they wouldn't when you've no starting point you can't really develop so uh-huh. they had the wrong starting point so they couldn't start, get start. people that like, people wouldn't get any better so they stopped doing the river dance thing uh, because yeah it became less less fashionable and as then well. it can, and then river dance stopped coming so much and uh, so but we've with our school i feel that we've we've been quite successful in in getting out there and doing if you've done a few tv things as well and yeah. so so it all helps and word of word of mouth helps as well when people look for irish dancing in denmark that the, we're the only school so you're the one to go people, to so yeah. you've got a dance school you're a professional step dancer you play the boron you play the, the tin whistle you speak uh, irish uh, you speak <laughs> a northern Ireland english you're uh, embarrassing. You, you sing. <laughs> i mean for god's sake People, we better tell the people where we can get uh, your material. Uh, for instance, uh, I can recommend highly your. You've two albums out though, haven't you? I have the one on a, a long time ago called mm. "By Yonder Town." I, I've never heard that one. It's an EP. There's six songs on it, and it's mostly unaccompanied uh, songs, so it's very first, so traditional. First, 
the first I heard of you was uh, Dear Irish Boy, which was out last yeah. year. And uh, have you got a website that people can consult? I have. It's very easy. It's mariannegreen.com. That's M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E. Yes. Green, uh, no E at the end of it. No. M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E-G-R-E-E-N.com. So if they, if they go along there, they can find out all about you. And of course, uh, we're filming a little video at the moment, and that'll be on the BBC uh, website. It usually takes about a week. Uh, next week but of course you can you can have a look at you and see and, and hear you on iPlayer uh, from from this afternoon on so if you want to have a look at what we all look like which is a horrendous <laughs> prospect in the case of most of us uh, that video will be up now let me just remind the people where you'll be now tonight now I, I can't say these things and I'm from here this is the, the Belfast Fla is it culture land tell me the details again tonight it's 8 o'clock culture land falls road Falls Road, and you're also appearing with At First Light. Yes. But you're actually on first. Yes. Why, why are they on? Why are you not on second? Uh, I don't know. I think <laughs> they're very don't popular. Know you, they're they don't very know who popular you are. here. They're, very, they're a big name here. They, so. No, but they don't know how good you are. <laughs> they don't know how good. They, they'll find out tonight. And tomorrow night you're in Donala. Yes. I'm in getting better. Oma. Donala in Oma. And on uh, Sunday night, the Lodge in Castle Welland, County Down. You might have time for another couple, you know. Will you do another one for us now? Yes. And maybe we'll do another one later. That would be lovely. Oh, go ahead. What we'll do you fancy do doing? Bonnyport Moor. Oh, yes. Yes. Lovely. You see, frantic activity on the guitar here. It's a pretty, you, you, you sprung that on him, didn't you? <laughs> it's got the old capo distra. Uh, no, it's not a capo distra. It's just little thumb picks. Oh, yeah. Thumb picks. All right, then. Because he bites his nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'd need them to stop me from biting my nails. Bonnie Portmore, you shine where you stand, and the more I think on you, the more I think long. If I had you now, as I had once before, all the lords in old England would not purchase Portmore. Fort more, I am sorry to see soldier wars the destruction of your ornamentary. It stood on your shore for many so long dead, till the long boats from Antrim came to float us. Saying where will we shelter and where will we sleep For the oak and the ash, they are all cut and down And the walls of Bunny Portmore are all dying to the ground Thank you. That was lovely. Thanks. Uh, people uh, writing in, sending texts. Uh, that singing is absolutely beautiful. I'd give anything for a night in an Irish pub 
listening to that girl. That's from Iris and Bally Claire. Well, you, you get your great. opportunity. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was great. Harmonica playing says Pat and Loch Gall. Uh, tell Jerry when the harmonica is played in Irish music in the north, it is known as the French fiddle. Did you know that? No. I didn't know that. <laughs> when, when they refer in the north, when they refer to the harmonica, they call it the French fiddle. I bet you that's an old thing. Please plant. She, please pass my number on to that woman. I have a thing I've been running, a portable dance floor. It's perfect for her. What does that mean? What does that mean? I, I have think no it's idea. an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, listen, Marion, thank you for, for coming in. I, th I think you're fantastic. and uh, It's great to know that uh, this music is flourishing in, in, in Denmark. Mm. You know. Thanks for asking. Oh, not at all. It's a pleasure. And, uh, I, I, must, I, can't, uh, I have to remind the people again, you're, you're in uh, Kulturland tonight and uh, tomorrow night. You're in Don Ulla, Ulla. Don Ulla, Oma. It's the first time I'm in Oma. The first time in Oma. Yeah, so well, it's very exciting. They they mm. like you in Oma. <laughs> Oma's a nice place and uh, very welcoming people, and uh, as as indeed they are in Belfast, but Oma particularly. And then on Sunday night you're in the Lodge in Castlewellen and County Down. And of course your website is Marianne M A R I A double N E, Green G R double E N, dot com. So, uh, would you care to do just one more for yep. us to say cheerio? Okay, we'll and, and thank you together. to Martin. Martin, welcome home. You're very welcome. Nice, nice to, to talk to you. Nice. nice to talk to you. Yeah. And Magnus, fine guitar player. He's ready now to play this one. And of course, Sonic, you people have picked up on you right away. You're, you're, you're no mean uh, person. <laughs> and of course, Marion Green, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming Thanks. in. Hope to see you again very soon here. Thank you. Thanks. Love, talk, and everlasting words. 
That's words by a singer called Rachel Bell. Uh, a gentleman writes to me and he said, uh, I was listening to Radio Nagaltak the other day. I caught the end of an interview, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think they were talking to Marion Green. Uh, if a Danish girl has managed to learn English, then I think that is even more impressive than her to own English. Ask her if she can indeed speak Irish. Well, I've already asked her. Did you find it hard to learn? I'm sure she did. I'll be back on Monday. Could it be over? Now the year older Step in closer And let me rest for a while I turn around The foundations are laid I stand your ground And do what you say I say that it's not the This is a group, I'm not quite sure where they're from. They're called Wano, but they're very good. W H A N A U. I must investigate them further. Goodbye. I said that it's not the end. It's only starting. Oh,